In 1974, the most powerful broadcast ever deliberately beamed into space was made from Puerto Rico. The broadcast formed part of the ceremonies held to mark a major upgrade to the Arecibo radio telescope. The transmission consisted of a simple pictorial message aimed at the globular star cluster M13. And then it happened. After 27 years later, we got a reply they named Arecibo Answer. It all started in 1974. The Arecibo telescope was just upgraded on its 10th anniversary. Astrophysicist Frank Drake thought to commemorate the occasion by using a Reichbo radar to send a message to an extraterrestrial civilization. He was the creator of the Drake Equation, aims to describe the number of the detectable civilization within our galaxy. He has also collaborated with Carl Sagan to design the Pioneer Plaque, the first physical message flown beyond the solar system, and was part of the team that developed the Voyager record. However, the Arecibo message also was an opportunity to think about actually how to construct a message that could be interpreted without any expectation of a common language. Drake designed the message with the assistance of scientists at Cornell University as well as Arecibo. On 1974, November 16th, the message beamed toward the globular cluster M13. It consists of roughly 100,000 stars and lies about 25,000 light years away in the constellation Hercules. M13 was chosen because it was the right size and was in the sky at the right time and place for the ceremony. Drake was confident that any one intelligent life could pick up the signal and can decode it with the help of mathematics and science. The signal was broadcasted at a frequency of 2,380 megahertz and modulated by shifting the frequency by 10 hertz with a power of 450 kilowatts. The message was comprised of several sections, each depicting a particular aspect of our civilization. At the top are binary representations of the numbers 1 through 10, interestingly showing the numbers 8, 9, and 10 as two columns. This shows anyone decoding the message that we can specify that numbers too large to be written on a single line can be carried over. The next section contains the binary values 1, 6, 7, 8, and 15, which indicate the atomic numbers of the primary elements for life on Earth. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, respectively. The larger section of three rows represents the formulas for the sugars and bases in the nucleotides of DNA. Beneath this is a graphical representation of our DNA, double helix on either side of a straight vertical bar, which indicates the number of nucleotides in DNA. Directly below the DNA double helix is a small representation of us, humans, with a body and two arms and two legs, like a little stick man. On the left is a binary value of the population of Earth, this can be calculated as roughly 4.29 billion, which is roughly the population of the world back in 1974. On the right of the humanoid form is a binary code for the height of humans. Because we cannot communicate in human measurements, such as feet and inches, the height is represented in wavelength units. As mentioned earlier, the actual message was transmitted on 2,380 MHz. To convert this into a wavelength, we divide it into 300 to obtain a wavelength in meters. B equals sign 0.1260502M equals sign 12.6 centimeters. This is our wavelength unit. The next section is a simplified representation of our solar system, where we live. It shows the sun and nine planets, roughly representative of size. By moving the third planet up slightly, it highlights that something is significant about the third planet from the sun, Earth. The last section depicts the origin of the message itself, the Arecibo radio telescope, which is a curved structure. Underneath this, as the last two lines of the message, is the diameter of the Arecibo radio dish. The Arecibo reply. It was also known as the Arecibo answer, and it was in a crop circle format, and it was a replica of the Arecibo message, which contained various pieces of information such as the numbers of chemical elements, the composition of DNA, the position of Earth in the solar system, and a depiction of a human being. The answer itself doesn't expand much upon this and still forms the same 23x73 grid, and most of the chemical data remains the same. The changes to the message to create the response are straight from existing alien folklore and science fiction. In the section detailing important chemical elements, the main focus is altered from carbon to silicon, and the diagram of DNA is re-scribbled slightly. At the bottom, the pictogram of a human is replaced with a shorter figure with a large, bulbous head. This is a clear reference to the gray type of alien, 
and as a depiction could only be something that a human came up with. Reality check. The likelihood of the Arecibo message ever being picked up is very, very low. It was aimed at globular star cluster M13, which is 25,000 light years away. It's so far away that in 25,000 years when it finally reaches its destination, its destination will have moved. The message was only intended as a demonstration of the transmission technology, not as a serious attempt to make contact. The message does also pass close enough to a few nearby stars to have been potentially received in their vicinity. But why wouldn't the recipient simply send back a message via radio instead of coming here and messing up some poor farmer's crops at night and then sneaking away?